Jared Poland Fronos Photo. Dot com here with another raw file edit of the week, and this would be 35, and it is sponsored by Drobo. Because we all shoot raw, we kind of need uh, a lot of storage, and the way that I store my files, actually redundant, double redundant, maybe it's four times redundant, I actually have two Drobo S's, both packing 10 terabytes of data storage, and then there's multiple redundant multiple redundancies inside there with the drobos as they you know if, a, if if two hard drives fail in one of my units all my data is still safe um so that's pretty cool and i have two of those backups going on right now and i love them and we will be giving away a free drobo for bay at some point so definitely keep an eye out because uh that's a nice little prize to win so here we have a street photo we asked for some street photos that we could play with and my idea for this photo is to make a killer thick ass black and white yeah, that's right a thick black and white edit of course you know i like going black and white i am going to utilize the v button today and i hit the v button and it gets rid of all the color it makes it a black and white um so how do i want to do this i can pump my contrast which i tend to normally do i can do this with my exposure but i'm not going to i want to play with mr fill light because we know that doing this weird thing with fill light and then filling it black in <laughs> filling it back in with the blacks gives you something really thick and incredible and i likes it ooh, ooh 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 as we're moving the temperature don't forget this does affect your raw file look what's happening look at look at this look at this let's watch this guy down here and just see what happens right there look at the tones in his shirt see how it's changing that is incredible how much this actually plays a role and affects your image i'm gonna go with something like that for the time being black levels more it's kind of funny because it it almost looks like i brought it back or i could do this without doing all this fill light clarity i don't want to pump it up too high and i don't want to hmm, do i want to get rid of it i don't know but i think what I find distracting in this image is uh, up up top here. So I really want to throw in a crop. And I want to lock the aspect ratio. Did you guys know that you can change your crop to vertical just by like going like this? You pull the mouse over. So right now it's a horizontal. But if I wanted it vertical, I'll keep pulling over and then up at the same time. And then there you go, you have a vertical. But that is not what I want to do with the photo. So I'll go back to my crop here. I'm keeping the original aspect ratio. That's why I clicked this lock button, because I want to keep it in the 2 by 3 ratio. So here we go. Let's throw some creativity cropping into this. Boom, boom, 3, 2, 1, boom. And there we go. It's a little less distracting. I still have infinite focus here. I didn't even tell you what it was shot at. 1 25th of a second. F8, ISO 235 millimeter, 1.8 on the Nikon D300S. So this is a little bit better so far because it's giving us the person. Now there is something to look at. Now we know that it's the guy in the photo. So I threw a creative crop in here. And let's just play with some of this exposure. To see where I can take this. To see if I do like it without some clarity or with clarity. I don't want it to be too harsh. I'm just actually going to leave it at negative 2 for the time being. Um, and let's see how our, our curves are going to work today. Ooh, look at that. I like that. I like that. It got rid of all the flatness. Boom. Pumped it up. Light. Do I want to do this? Do I want to do this? Boom. No. I don't want to do that. But I may come back to that slightly. Let's see what happens when we play with the darks. Nope. Don't want to do that. And now the shadows sometimes take your uh, blacks to 11. So there we go. We got that. I'm going to come in with a little bit of exposure. Contrast is already maxed. Blacks are up there. That's the original. Boom. There's the black and whites. Nice and thick. Uh, I did a nice, you know, I did a crop. That's. I, I thought it felt it needed a crop in this one because the original was just, it's a little too far away so far away yeah it's a little too far away so this is what i'm gonna go with uh one edit this week black and white nice and thick street photography uh you get drawn into the person now with this crop i think it's less distracting in the background and now adam you are up
All right, here we have some street photography. I'm a huge fan of street photography. I actually do quite a bit of it myself, and I uh, find it a lot of fun. Uh, there's something just about walking around an urban setting, in my case, mostly New York City, and uh, just, you know, with a camera. And typically what I do is I just walk around with a 35 uh, fixed lens on my camera. It kind of forces you to kind of get close to the action and to see things in one frame, which this photographer did a great job of. Coincidentally, uh, looking at the info here, this particular photographer shot at 35 millimeters. Very interesting. Um, one of the choices here is um, that the photographer shot at f8. Um, I wouldn't have necessarily done that myself because we've got a lot of detail, a lot of this foreground detail and even this background detail which is really in, in sharp focus here and um, I don't find those details to be as pleasing. So we're going to do a bunch of different things here. We're going to punch this image up. We're going to give it some sheen. We're going to crop it. We're going to vignette it. And we're going to possibly do something to kind of give the illusion that maybe not everything was in focus. So let's first start by giving this a crop. Hitting the R key, getting into the crop module. Just going to bring that down over here. I want to lose this top bit, you know, bring it down to about there. I don't mind this little angle over there and I'll hit the R key again somewhere. Actually, I just want to bring this out to about there and let's just keep that like that. Okay, we're gonna move fast here. We don't have a lot of time. Exposure, masking it off with the Alt or Option key and I'm just checking my overexposed areas. Don't want to get too overexposed there and do the same thing with the blacks. You know, I don't want too many underexposed areas. I'm gonna look at it as well. I'm just gonna do something like that. Um, and uh, let's see, we'll do a little bit of fill here um, just to open up the inside of the frame. That's kind of nice. We'll add some contrast somewhere like there, and we will definitely add some clarity, something like that. I also want to add some highlights because, you know, the image is a little flat to me, and I'm just going to bring it up like that just to give it some sheen. Um, white balance, hit the W key. I'm going to select this, which looks fairly neutral and that kind of uh, made it a little bit green not crazy about that I'm gonna hit another spot maybe down here there we go that warmed it up a little bit now we could obviously go in there and finesse it whatever but in the interest of time and to demonstrate the fact that the W key gives you the little dropper selector tool that's what we did and I, and I kinda like the look of that um, luminance I'm just gonna pump the oranges a little bit why not take advantage of this this orange situation that's going on right here. You know, you've got that orange graffiti K, you got his orange jumpsuit, boom. So we're just gonna keep that right there. Not touching split toning this week. Definitely wanna do some sharpening. Grab my selector tool. This looks pretty sharp over here. I'm just gonna pump that up until we see a lot more detail. Now, I'm gonna hold the Alt or Option key and I'm going to mask because I do not want to sharpen textures. I only wanna sharpen the line and the edge detail. So I'm going to go up to about there. Boom. All right, now let's look. We've got the before. Really flat image right here. Not necessarily anybody's fault because, you know, a lot of times there's not a lot of sharpening done in the camera, particularly when you're shooting raw. But great thing about shooting raw is you take it into Lightroom or whatever and you can sharpen it up. You can really get it to get that kind of punch. Um, I want to also add some uh, post-crop vignetting over here. So I'm going to do the highlight priority. I'm going to bring this down because I really want the attention to really be focused more on this dude sitting at the bottom or standing at the bottom of the stairs. Uh, I'm going to just take my midpoint in a little bit there. Um, roundness. I'm just going to open it up a little because I don't want the frame to be too dark. And I'm just going to feather out the edges just to give it a little bit more um, of a clean kind of uh, transition there. Boom, there we go. Okay, so the issues that I'm still having with this is this this sign here is, to me, it's just so unattractive, you know, with this kind of modern vehicle and whatever. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to open up a brush tool. I'm going to use the letter K or the K, boom. And that brings me right up to um, the brush and I'm going to go into the effect and I'm going to select clarity okay and what I'm going to reduce the clarity and you know it defaults to minus 56 so let's start with that 
I want to feather this quite a bit. I'm going to bring it out to 65 and I want a big tool and I'm just going to brush this around on the edges here. Okay. And I'm just going to keep brushing this around. And as you can see, you know, things are getting a little bit kind of fuzzier back there. And that's what I'm going to keep going for here. And I'm just going to keep going around something like that, something like that, something like that. Okay. Now we can hit the O key to see how where our brush went okay and that is pretty cool so let's just keep painting it up oh, let's undo that because I don't want to paint over the guy we're just gonna keep painting it over there we're gonna paint it all the areas that you know kind of ex except for the dude okay so I'm just gonna reduce the clarity a bit just something like that boom alright and I'm gonna hit the O key again and while we're in this brush I'm also gonna bring the sharpness down all right. Whoa, look at that. That's kind of crazy. All right. Bring the clarity down a little bit more. And let's see. Let's just kind of split the difference here because it's looking a little bit kind of wacky. Um, all right. Something like that. Now we can even do things like we could desaturate. Boom. So that we've only got this. You know, you've seen these kind of ads on TV for like, you know, Claritin or whatever, where it's like, somebody's got really bad allergies but then you know something whatever anyway we'll forget about that um so yeah so we're going to kind of leave it like that so we're going to go to the before and we're going to the after and you can see that from looking at this image it really kind of looks like this dude was selectively focused um in this frame um, now granted this was a very quick down and dirty edit but just to give you some ideas of some additional possibilities that you have in Lightroom. So looking forward to seeing your edits and let's go off to you Jared. Alright and we are back. Adam is here and he's proud of it. Oh yeah. How you doing Adam? I'm well and yourself? Oh yeah you know just a little tired eh? Hey you staying cool? Um, Keep it cool, eh? It's like 96 degrees. I have two bottles of water. I've almost killed this one second bottle. Right. Preparing I've got for the my, game. Uh, pistol grip. Oh, pistol grip, eh? Pistol grip. Pistol grip, eh? Ah, uh, pistol grip. So, what did you uh, what did you think about this this week? Well, you know, I love street photography. I mean, I. I know it's not really something that you're that into. But yeah, I'm not I'm, a keen street. I'm not a like street photographer personally. I mean, I'll be honest with you. I put my 35 f2 on my D700, and you know, if I'm leaving the house and I'm gonna, you know, I have a little bit of time to kill, or I just want to, you know, buzz around a new neighborhood, whatever. I love just taking street shots. You know, I mean, granted, you know, you don't always really hit it. And it's very spontaneous, but you know, there's something really cool about doing it. And and you know, this photographer did a really interesting job of catching this dude just in that little slice right there. Yeah, we can't tell if he's coming up the stairs, going past the stairs. But let me set it up. Uh, my edits in the top left, right here. Adams is the color one on the right, and the photographer's edit is down here on the bottom. And yeah, you decided to crop Adam. Oh, and uh, I believe you did as well. I, I did as well. I thought a crop yeah. was needed to draw the attention in further because the background uh, up top here just seemed to be distracting. You know, the above the grass. Right. Just seemed to be distracting, and it looked like you did the same thing as well. We just have two similar types. Of I felt that, crops. that that you know you have you had this building. Um, and all this reflective stuff going on, and these trees. There was so much kind of like what I would just call gobbledygook. Um, that really didn't lend to drawing your eye any more into this dude at the bottom of the stairs. Um, you know, I liked the graffiti. I liked the way that the, the railings were kind of pointing, almost like arrows yeah, pointing it, to this guy. it's drawing you into the image, and that's, that's what you look for when you're with your leading lines. Uh, let me ask you this, though. Why did you decide to stay with color? Because I knew you would do black and white. Um, Who, me? I thought, yeah. Do I ever do black and white? Yeah. I mean, I would bet your contrast is like, what, 100%? Well, actually, I went into Mr. Phil Light territory and had some fun with the, uh, I went and did something, you know, weird. I bumped Phil Light to 61, did 93 in the blacks, and the, yeah, the contrast is at 100. 
All right, here's the thing. I think that this image lends itself beautifully to black and white because you've got so many lines and textures and just all kinds of beautiful architectural detail. Not beautiful in like the sense of like, you know, the but, Taj Mahal, yeah, but just but really pops. visually interesting stuff. However, However, what I really loved was the orange graffiti K right around where the orange jumpsuit was. Sure. And I was like, I didn't want to lose that. I wanted to tie those two elements in to each other. Um, so I, I didn't I didn't want to go black and white. I thought about black and white, but I thought, you know, for color, there's something really interesting about those two elements kind of mirroring each other yeah, or complementing each other. It's, it's, it's one of those images that, you know, it'd be interesting to hear the story behind it. You know, did this guy just walk around the corner? Were you prepared for this? Were you coming down the stairs? Things like that. Uh, you know, I wanted I wanted to go with the thick black and white like normal. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to take it to the extreme. That's why I pumped up the fill light and then brought it sure. back with the blacks to try a little bit, um, you know, a little bit different direction than I normally go. But, you know, I wanted to make the 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 graffiti stand out, and then the crop came right. in to make you to make the person stand out because you're drawn into that by the stairs. Absolutely. Yeah. And what I did differently this week is I uh, used an adjustment brush to to uh, uh, de sharpen and um, right here in the in the stone everything. I was going to ask if you did that because I was going to say why does yours look like out of focus but mine looks sharp? Well, <laughs> yeah, yours looks insanely sharp. But if you look, the guy is in focus, really nice focus. And the idea was basically like the guy shot this or the gal shot, you know, with a 35.18, but shot at f8. And, you know, I think that if, the, if, if there was more selective focus on this, it could have been more interesting because I don't find the framing details to be so interesting that everything has to be in focus, you know, including that 25% off sign or whatever it is yeah, in the which back. Is, which is interesting because I keep seeing that and it's like, that's sharp, but then the window is out. Isn't it just weird how that happened? Yeah, I mean, I tried to, I, I, you know, obviously if there was a lot of time to do this, you know, could have really gone in there and, sure. and played with it a bit. But, um, you know, th look, this image to me is about timing and framing. And, you know, the, the, the fact that the guy's got his hands in his pockets would tell me that he's probably not hopping up those stairs. And he, I think the natural... know, and he also doesn't know that the photo is about to be taken. No, his expression is kind of like, huh? And, you know, those, those are kind of interesting moments. I mean, and you have to be careful you know, out there with your street photography. Depend, you know, some people may not want their photos taken. I think this guy was far enough away and on the top of the stairs that that gave him an advantage. <laughs> you mean running advantage? <laughs> exactly. Sure. But no, there, there, is, there is something to be said. And, you know, look, there is always that vibe that you can get when you're out there. There are people that, that, that you can tell they do not want a camera in their face. I mean, you can sense that vibe. And there's some people that might be resistant, but, you know, if you take their picture anyway, you know, sometimes they're just like, oh, whatever. Sure. So, so yeah. No, cool little edits. I think um, should be interesting again to see what everybody comes up with. See if somebody does something to the like major extreme. But I think we gave people a nice starting point. Uh, you know, a couple of different ways to do it. Uh, I went with the big fill light. You did some of that blurring stuff, and it'd be interesting to see where people go. So I thank you for that, Adam. Yep. And we're gonna thank you. we're gonna wrap this up. Uh, if you'd like to send in your street photography or any other type of photo, you can send it to Frono's photo at gmail.com be sure to include your raw file as well as the edited jpeg so we can put all three together um it is not a competition as we always say and even though people say one wins versus the other it's more of a let's learn from each different thing and see what we can pick out from each one um more so than the winners or the losers because that's not what it's all about because something you know everything's different for everybody else one may like one, one may like the other, and you never know. So, you know, there is no right or wrong way to do this stuff. So it's, it's cool to see what you guys are going to come up with. And I want to also thank Drobo for sponsoring this week because we all need to store our raw files uh, in redundancy for the future so that they are protected and we can edit them over and over and over again because they're there. All right, Adam, we'll see you next week. See ya. All right. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.